Howdy folks, hope you've all had a great weekend and welcome to another episode of Mingles with Jingles. I am now officially back in the YouTube saddle. Uh, as I'm sure most of you are aware, it's been a pretty turbulent month. My best friend Eddie, our beloved incompetent camera minion, uh, was diagnosed with bowel cancer and three weeks later he was dead. It took him incredibly quickly. I mean, he went from having trouble sleeping and not having much of an appetite to dead in the space of three weeks. Both Eddie's family and I um, would like to thank everybody for the messages of support in the comments of previous videos. Um, Eddie's sister in particular was overwhelmed by the outpouring of love uh, that everybody here had for Eddie because he really was a fantastic guy. So thank you, really, thank you to everybody for all of your messages of support and condolences. You have no idea how much it's meant to both me and Eddie's family, and we are very, very grateful. So, Eddie, my best friend, incompetent camera minion to the rich and famous, gone but never forgotten. Anyway, life, for the rest of us at least, must go on. So I thought I'd kick off this week's episode of Mingles with Jingles with something amusing. Did anybody see or hear of the announcements a while back that Iran, you know, the country, Iran, um, proudly announced uh, a whole bunch of admirals and generals standing together, smiling for the cameras, with an official press release proudly holding up this motherboard that they claimed was a quantum processing motherboard. Let me see if I can find the exact quote. Uh, yes, the first product of the quantum processing algorithm whatever the hell that means. Just about immediately, <laughs> the world said, no, it isn't. <laughs> uh, it's actually a $600 development board that you can buy on Amazon. <laughs> it was a Z board Zinc 7000 development motherboard. Um, and its specs were actually 256 gigabytes of storage, half a gigabyte of RAM, and a dual-core ARM Cortex-A9 processor. Not nearly enough to pump out qubits. Well, Iran ummed and odd about it, and then finally admitted, uh, and again, let me see if I can find the precise quote, uh, the unveiling of the FPGA board in the conference has conveyed this false mentality to the country's media space that the said board is a quantum processor, which was not the case. <laughs> Uh, so basically, they've done a full U-turn on the announcement, although they have made it very clear, and again I quote, The principle of the problem of the proposed algorithm dealing with the disturbance of surface vessels positioning systems is important and approved for the promotion of marine security. What? <laughs> well, that's clarified matters. <laughs> um, you couldn't make this shit up. So they announced they had this quantum processor by holding up this motherboard that you can buy for $600 on Amazon. <laughs> they were immediately busted. <laughs> uh, and then, in an effort to clarify matters, you know, to clear up any confusion, they spouted this mindless gobbledygook and bullshit. It's, it's kind of like... It's almost like they quickly hired a Star Trek writer to... <laughs> come up with that second press statement. Because <laughs> we've all watched Star Trek, all right, The Next Generation. You, you know how it goes. I kind of felt sorry for George, uh, not Geordie LaForge, he was the character. LeVar Burton, the actor who played Geordie LaForge, the chief engineer on the Enterprise, just looking at his script every week and thinking, oh, God, what do I have to say this week? Right, fine. So Captain Picard's on the bridge and he's yelling, Geordie, we need Warp Factor 9 now where we're toast. And he just looks at his script. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I'll just run an inverse tachyon polarity pulse through the main deflector generator array, and that should, yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever you have to say to make the plot happen that week. And that's basically what Iran's done in this uh, press announcement, clarifying the U-turn that they've just pulled on this quantum processor that they don't actually have. The principle of the problem of the proposed algorithm dealing with the disturbance of... What the fuck is he talking about? I don't know. <laughs> it sounds impressive. Just smile, clap, and play along. 
because we don't all want to look stupid. Genius. Speaking of things that you can buy on Amazon, see what I did there? Amazon Prime Day coming up tomorrow. It's actually two days. I don't know why they call it Amazon Prime Day. But yes, the 11th to the 12th, all kinds of deals available on Amazon. But you really need to be careful. So here's the thing. Do you remember a couple of years back uh, when everybody fell out of love with Gaijin Entertainment during one of the Steam summer sales? So quick recap. I think it was the Mustang pack at the time, actually, for War Thunder. Um, I'm not entirely sure, and for the purposes of the story, it doesn't really matter, but there was a pack that was on sale. Let's say it was the Mustang pack, and this was one of the original packs that you can actually buy in War Thunder. And during a particular Steam Summer Sale, it went on sale at a discounted price, except it wasn't actually a discounted price. It turned out that it was actually slightly more expensive than it had been on sale for at the non-discounted actual price a month earlier. And when this was pointed out, Gaijin did what Gaijin have become famous for doing, lied about it, denied it, and immediately started banning the accounts of anybody who suggested otherwise on the War Thunder forums. The thing is, and by the way, I need to stress that Gaijin are by no means unique for doing this. Everybody does it. It's just that Gaijin got busted doing it and then lied about it. But what they had done, in order to qualify for something being on sale in most legal jurisdictions, it must be at a lower price than it had previously been on sale for in the month leading up to the sale. And what Gaijin had done was put the price up right before, like the day before the sale, and then bring it down to a price that was lower than the price the day before, but actually a little bit higher than the price it had been on sale for the week earlier, and called it a sale. It was a discounted price now, which technically was correct, but actually, realistically, even if not 100% legally, not so much. And again, you know, I do have to stress, Gaijin are by no means the only people who do this. Um, there are major chain stores all across the world who might, for example, have 30 stores in your country. And they have sales in 29 of those stores. And the 30th store is both technically and legally a store, just the same as the other 29, but realistically and actually it's just a warehouse where they have all the same products that are available on all of the other 29 stores except in this one place they're all at a slightly higher price <laughs> just so the other 29 places can say hey come on in look at all of these discounts check out that value for money when all they're really doing is selling you the same stuff at the recommended retail price they're not actually discounted at all except legally they are because of that one store where everything's on sale for a higher price. And um, this sort of thing is going on, which is why you need to be careful on Amazon for Amazon Prime Day. I should probably point out it's not really Amazon's fault, but there are some incredibly shady so-called deals going on. Let me give you a couple of examples. So there's an MSI laptop the MSI GF65 Thin. It comes with an NVIDIA RTX 3060, an Intel Core i5 10500H processor, 16 gigabytes of memory, and only, only half a terabyte of SSD storage. It's on sale for $839.99 at Amazon, which claims you're actually saving $1,160 from the previous price of $1,999.99. So they're claiming this is a $2,000 laptop that you can now buy for $840. A saving of $1,160. Except this machine was never on sale for $2,000. <laughs> $2,000 for an RTX 3060 and half a terabyte of storage. I mean, it's likely that it probably was on sale for $2,000, but nobody capable of thinking and breathing at the same time is going to buy a laptop with those specifications for $2,000. That's worth maybe $1,100. So you are technically, I suppose, still getting a discount, but you're not getting the $1,100 discount that they're claiming. No way. There's another example, and I got these from the PC Gamer News website, by the way. Um, speaking of solid state drives, here we go. Western Digital Black SN850X. This is a 4 terabyte NVMe solid state drive. I mean, this is a huge 
SSD. And it's currently available on Amazon for basically $300, which is a $400 discount from the previous price of $699.99, basically $700. Except it isn't. Well, it's only a $400 discount if you believe the fantasy that this SSD has ever been on sale for $700 this year. Because it hasn't been on sale for that price since 2022. Previously, you could get this exact same SSD for $290.55 at Newegg, which is a, it's a $9 saving over the current sale price. Um, and that previous price itself was a discount of $68 from the $359 that this SSD was on sale for, not the $700 that is being claimed. So what can you do about this? How can you protect yourself from getting scammed over something that's being advertised as a deal when it actually isn't? Well, it's, it's not that difficult, actually. If you see something on one of these sales, whether it's Amazon Prime Day sales or whatever, it's a generally good rule of thumb to live by, just Google the name of the product and check what the recommended retail price actually is. And you'd be surprised how often the recommended retail price is the actual price that this supposedly discounted piece of kit is currently being sold for in the sale. So tread carefully. On the other hand, if you don't want to go to the bother of actually Googling the recommended retail price yourself, there's a Chrome extension called Keeper. I'll put a link in the description. Um, that actually embeds a graph into the Amazon product page where it shows you the previous price that that product has been on sale for. So if you see any suspicious spikes in the cost right before the thing went on allegedly sale, you know you're being had. There are also various different websites you can consult that track the prices of various different products across various different websites. This, in fact, is how Gaijin got busted in the Steam Summer Sale all those years ago, uh, because the internet remembers things. <laughs> and you can track prices. So just be careful. Amazon Prime Day coming up. But not everything is quite as discounted as they would have you believe. The final little tidbit of uh, knowledge that I wanted to share with you is to do with the release of Diablo 4. I'm pretty sure everybody's aware that Diablo 4 is out and has been for some time, but prior to the release of the game, an advertising billboard went up on one of the highways in Melbourne, Australia, with a picture of Lilith, the antagonist of the game, and the words, Welcome to Hell, Melbourne, 6th of the 6th, 23. This apparently upset a bunch of people. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, a whole bunch of complaints were submitted to the Australian Advertising Standard community. One concerned motorist, upon seeing this billboard, while presumably driving to work one morning, complained on the grounds of, and I quote, religious reasons, and it's promoting evil and satanic paraphernalia. The words, welcome to hell, Melbourne, as part of the advertisement for this game, and a picture of a devil are offensive to me as a Christian. The imagery is also inappropriate for my children to see and has already given them nightmares. The advertiser responded by saying, the welcome to hell refers to a fictional location. You can almost imagine them saying this very, very slowly for the heart of thinking. Refers to a fictional location that a person will visit as part of the gameplay in their quest to defeat the fictional villain portrayed in the ads. It does not state or imply that Brisbane or Melbourne is hell and as such is not derogatory to these cities or any of their inhabitants. In regards to giving nightmares to children, the advertiser's response reads, and I'm not making this up, the complaints state that the ads were viewed on billboards on the motorway. The average person driving on a vehicle on motorways is likely above the game's age rating. <laughs> Which offers the very sensible perspective that children shouldn't be driving. And if you're having dreams about Lilith as an adult, it's probably not Blizzard's fault. All of which means that this week's episode of Mingles with Jingles ends on an incredibly rare example of me actually defending Blizzard for a change. <laughs> I mean, you can call Blizzard out for a lot of shit, but I really don't think this is one of them. So on that bombshell, that's it for this week. I, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're all going to have yourselves a great week, and hopefully if you follow some of the advice I've given in this week's episode of Mingles with Jingle, you end up saving yourselves a substantial amount of money by avoiding getting any scams in any so-called sales. 
that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll catch you next time.